Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Wonderful to see you today. Would you please pray with me? Excuse me. Holy God, we thank you for this day. Thank you for the 175 years of ministry of Blackwater. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us today, God, and create in us clean hearts and a new refreshed spirit. And may we, Lord, put our eyes upon you and your word and proclaim you right about everything today. And all the people said, amen. amen. Well, this is the day that the Lord has made. Amen. Let's try it again. This is the day the Lord has made. Amen. Now the kids are going to lead us in our opening worship song. So the words are going to be on the screen. If you've got some cool choreography, go for it. join me in saying our affirmation of of faith. It'll be on page 881 in our hymnal, and it'll also be on the screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, crucified, dead and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. the peace this morning is a sign of welcoming. Now, bef listen up. Before you all sit down, I want you to turn around. Turn around and look up, and Doug is going to take our picture as a church. All right? So... Everybody say, hi, Doug. Hi, Doug. <laughs> That's Doug's laugh. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you all. You may be seated. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so this is a time where we're going to share a couple of ways that we can do life and be in ministry together this week. One of those is right after this service finishes up. Right after this service finishes up, we have probably one of the biggest potlucks I've ever seen since being here. Thrown down over here in the fellowship hall, and guess what? You're all invited, all right? So it's wonderful to have you all here to celebrate this momentous occasion. If you're visiting and you're like, what in the world is going on here? Hey, this ministry is turning 175 years and we're celebrating what God has done. Amen? So that's why, that's why we're taking pictures. And so I uh, also wanted to uh, remind you that next Sunday at noon in the fellowship hall, we are going to have a new member luncheon. And so if you've thought about joining or you have recently joined, that's going to be a time where we get together. You're going to meet some uh, lay leaders and, and, and church staff uh, there. And that's also going to be lunch provided. You know, Blackwater is going to do everything with a meal, right, Patty? So uh, also, I uh, wanted to make sure that you check your bulletin for the save the dates. It has pretty much our entire fall lineup in it. I won't read that off to you, but you get the idea. Now, one of the things that we are going to do to celebrate the ministries of Blackwater is to recognize that Christ is present and all kinds of great things are happening. So we made a little montage uh, to show you what that looks like. Take a look.
gotta get what I want right now. Cause you'll come through again, 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 and again. Oh, but even if you take your time. All I can say after that is God is good. <laughs> You're supposed to say all the time now. Come on. <laughs> and all the time. <laughs> Amen. So listen, I have uh, a, a really exciting person for us to talk to this morning. It's somebody who really has a vision of bringing our city together along with our communities of faith. And so I also want you to welcome him because he's a birthday boy today. And so I'd like to introduce you to Mayor Wade. Mayor Wade, come on up. Wade Evans. Thank you, uh, Kenan, and thank you all here at Blackwater. Uh, 49 years ago and eight months, I was christened right here. Well, not in this one building, but I was christened in this church. And uh, I've been on a journey since then. And it, it, it took me running for mayor to, uh, to push me to my knees because of the things that were being said, while, while not necessarily true, I had lived my life in a way that made them plausible. And it was, it was a real wake-up call that <clears throat> if I was going to serve God, uh, I had to do it in a way that, that elevated God and not myself. And I had spent 47 years of my life doing it my way. And so uh, I've, I've been very fortunate to, to be in this position at this season of my life. Uh, and my mission, I said election night, uh, the people present were asking me if I was nervous, and I really wasn't. I knew God, God was going to put me where I could be to, to lead in the way he wanted it done. And uh, I was fortunate enough to become the mayor of our great city. And day one, uh, and every morning we pray that God gives us the guidance to serve you all as well as everyone in our city in a way that glorifies him. And really quick, we learned the importance of our faith community. We have 33 churches in our city. Um, we have big churches. We have small churches. We have denominational churches. And my message to them at every turn and every chance I get is, is none of that really matters. What matters is the body of Christ. And, and the church uh, of the body of Christ, the ecclesia, if you will. And we knew that the way to elevate our community was not through government. It's not the way you elevate a nation or anything else. It's through our faith community and by the, by the work of, of the Father and, and by doing what he's called us to do. And so I have pushed our faith community, and I'm so grateful to have uh, Pastor Kennan and, and Blackwater and the men uh, in the men's club here at Blackwater, uh, the fact that they're praying for our city every day. And so I'm here not only as a birthday boy, but as a, a, as a, a, a disciple of Christ. I just want to continue to push him in our community. And we're doing something on October 5th that uh, is, is very new uh, for a city to undertake uh, with our partners. And we're bringing a faith and family night to Shoe Creek because we know that fixing roads and digging ditches is very important in the management of a city. But what's more important is that we turn our community back to God. And so uh, we've been very fortunate to have uh, overwhelming support through uh, private donors. So we stay out of uh, the bullseye of the ACLU because we're doing this with private money. Uh, we're gonna be bringing Sanctus Real, uh, which is if you're in the, if you listen to Caleb or 
America One Radio or whatever that, that alternative Christian channel is, you know who Sanctus Real is. Um, but, but more importantly, our local worship groups will be performing starting at 2 o'clock. And, and here, Blackwater Church will be represented. So we're having a, a, a fall fest, if you will, that morning. We'll have vendors. Uh, it'll be similar to every other fall fest. But unlike the rest of the fall fest, we'll start at 2 o'clock with our worship bands on the stage. And each one of them will go for around 45 minutes. Then their pastor of the respective churches will have a chance to say a few words. And then at 5 o'clock, not as the mayor, but as Wade Evans, a man who stands before you as a sinner, uh, I'm going to share my testimony with the community uh, because I think it's important that we know that no matter how many times you stagger out of blackies, uh, you you can be redeemed uh, by submitting to God's will. And he will unleash things that you've never imagined in your life if you submit to God's will. And so that's what we're doing uh, October 5th. I invite you all to come. Your, your church has been very supportive of the mission of elevating God in our community. Uh, and so I thank you all for having me here today. 175 years is is eight generations of regular Christians and ten for Catholics. Uh, but, <laughs> but the importance of something, and it's a reminder to all of us that while the short-term desires we may have as a community, uh, the church and, and the leadership and our, our government needs to realize that the decisions we make are not about ourselves and it's not about today. Because think back 175 years ago, had the Hooper family not been so gracious to, to lay the foundation here. So thank you all. Thank you, Pastor. And uh, I appreciate your, your uh, having me here today. Thank you. So, uh, wow, thank you, uh, Mayor Wade. Isn't it nice to have uh, this wonderful new expression of faith in our community? I'm looking forward to being a part of that. I know our band is uh, gearing up and practicing. I was at the rehearsal this week, and uh, it was a lot of fun. Jacob is the guy right there. He, isn't Jacob awesome? He's a wonderful. So is Miranda. Miranda's uh, around here. Um, is Chelsea Fur and Lynn Nicholson here? Come on up. Come on up, you two. One of the things that I love to do and have gotten to do about 130 times since being here at Blackwater is to welcome new members into the life of our church. And uh, we have Chelsea and Lynn who are, uh, come on over here. Oh, Y'all are going to join together. Come on over here. And uh, here's the questions that I have for you all. Uh, and that is this. Do you profess Jesus Christ as your Savior? And do you promise to renounce evil in all the ways that those forces present themselves in our world? And will you, in ministry here at Blackwater, along with all of your brothers and sisters out there, will you support the uh, church through your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? All right. And so we have something that we want to pledge back and affirm uh, to you, and it's this. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love as members together with you in the body of Christ and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church. We renew our covenant faithfully to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness that in everything, God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. So see, we affirm that right back to you. Friends, your newest sisters in ministry, Lynn and Chelsea. Love you. Love you too. Of course, love having you here, Chelsea. See, by the way, has already started her ministry. She's doing a, our grief recovery group on Tuesday nights. You're awesome. <laughs> Thank you all. Great to have you uh, as our new members. 
gosh, I love this day so much. It's wonderful. Now, um, I want to also let you know that we baptized this guy on Wednesday in our prayer garden, and he has also come uh, to, into membership with the church uh, as of Wednesday by profession of faith. That's Eric. Would you please give Eric a hand? We're grateful. We're grateful for him as well. And so, uh, uh, so and I will tell you, a little turtle came out for Eric's baptism. <laughs> he said he didn't want to be in front of anybody. I said, sorry, God's plans are different. The little turtle stuck his head out and watched Eric get baptized. So that's, that's the way God rolls. Uh, I want to introduce to you something that's a brand new uh, a thing for our church that involves our narthex and the entry to our fellowship hall. It's a vision to help uh, commemorate the fact that this church has been in ministry for 175 years and communicate some very important uh, things about that. Take a look at this video about the new project. Welcome to Blackwater United Methodist Church, where we are proud to celebrate 175 years of faith, service, and community. Today, we invite you on a journey through our rich history. This is an endeavor that we are calling the Heritage Project. Our story begins in the 1850s when the land was graciously gifted by the Hooper family to the Louisiana Conference. It was here that the original Methodist circuit riders established a preaching circuit in 1848. This humble beginning laid the foundation for a vibrant community dedicated to sharing the love of Christ. Over the decades, our physical campus has transformed. We have built four sanctuaries, each one a testament to our commitment to faith and community. From the inaugural church, which welcomed all denominations, to our current home, each space has echoed with prayers, songs, and the spirit of fellowship. Our campus has evolved to include parsonage, where families have gathered, a fellowship hall that has served as a hub for connection, and specialized buildings for adults and children. Each structure embodies countless stories of ministry and devotion, all aimed at making disciples of Jesus Christ. As we reflect our past, we also celebrate the many outreach and mission initiatives that have flourished over the years from our Parents' Day Out program to discipleship for seniors and for support for veterans to engaging with families and school children. Our ministries have touched countless lives. As part of the Heritage Project, we are excited to unveil a detailed timeline that chronicles our ministers and significant milestones over these 175 years. This timeline will serve not only as a remembrance of our past, but as an educational tool for newcomers, helping them understand the depth and breadth of our congregational journey. At Blackwater United Methodist Church, we are a multi-generational congregation deeply rooted in the mission of passing down our faith from one generation to the next. We are not just a part of history, we are actively writing it every day, living out our call to bring the light of Christ to our city of Central and beyond. In our Northex and Fellowship Hall foyers, we will create displays that communicate our church's historical legacy the evolution of our campus, and the impactful ministries we have nurtured. Each artifact is a calling for us to remember our heritage and embrace our mission moving forward. As we embark on this exciting project, we invite you to partner with us. The Heritage Project will cost approximately $4,000 for all this artwork to be installed across our campus and your support will help us create a legacy that educates and inspires future generations to come. 
If you are interested in giving, please scan the QR code on the screen or go to blackwaterumc.org slash give and be sure to select the Heritage Project in the drop-down menu. Join us in celebrating our past, engaging in our present, and envisioning our future as we continue to glorify God through the ministry of Blackwater United Methodist Church. Together, let us carry our story and legacy forward. We can't wait to see what God will do next. Can you help me thank Debbie Simmons, Linda Hunt, our church historians, as well as our trustees, and Ian Carney for their work on this? I would appreciate it. They've done an outstanding job, and it's important that our campus reflects the, the heritage that we have. If you are a member of the Hooper family this morning who donated the original land to uh, the Louisiana Conference, would you please stand this morning? The Hooper family. Thank you all, thank you. You may be seated. I just want to share with you, Paula Hooper and I were talking uh, yesterday, uh, and she actually found the original documents where the, uh, Ella Hup uh, and Nancy purchased uh, the land in 1846. And it was in 1848, two years later, that a Methodist circuit rider established Blackwater Road as a preaching point. Uh, and so in less than a decade, Ella Hugh would lose his life and then Nancy would donate the land, and I would just want you to know that all of these years later, 175 years later, their original vision of passing down their faith for generations has come true. Amen? They have worked alongside God to make that happen. And... Just a fluke, you know they're God things, right? There's just God moments, we've all experienced them all. This week, one of the congregation's friends, who also has a house in Florida, who said, we go to First United Methodist Church over in Florida, but we're not gonna be a member there. We already told them, no, we belong to Blackwater, and we're going back there. But her name is Sally, and here's a picture of her. And Sally said, you know what, Pastor? I believe so much about what Blackwater has done to continue its ministry. I wanna be the first to give to that heritage project. And she did, she wrote a check. So I just wanna say thank you to Sally, it was great. And I know she's watching online this morning from Florida, and I just wanna say uh, that we're glad that you're with us, as well as all of our uh, folks on uh, Facebook and online. So anyway, God bless uh, for all of that. Isn't that wonderful? Let's give a hand for the Heritage Project. Now we have come to the time of our service where we do offer ourselves to God in all the ways that God calls us to. We've uplifted those in our membership vows this morning. Our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our, our service, and our witness. And I pray that you would have the Holy Spirit search your hearts now for somebody to uplift in prayer. I pray that you would also remember that your presence here is one of the ways that you offer yourself back to God, God who loves you extravagantly. And all of you who have come to give honor to what God has done here today, thank you, our special guest, thank you. Um, your presence makes a difference. Your gifts how can we rally together to make ministry that brings the light and the hope of Christ to our world? Always be willing to serve your fellow humankind and whatever you do, make sure you tell somebody all of the good things that God has done in your life because it really does inspire uh, them uh, to, to hear that. Let's pray. God, we thank you so much for what we're about to receive. And in only the way you can, supernaturally multiply these gifts, God. And may we join our voices and our songs and our continued worship, Lord, with that around the world. And may that be pleasing as this whole planet reverberates to bring you glory and honor. In Jesus' name, amen.
How great thou art. I am grateful to be here today with us to be able to celebrate 175 years and to go to God in prayer. And so I invite us now to take a moment to quiet ourselves, quiet our spirits as we offer up these prayers to God as we know there is so much going on in our world, in our country, in our community, and even in our own homes. And so God, we ask right now that you would just join me in this time of prayer, and then we will end this with all saying the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Oh, good and gracious God, we come now, Lord, just saying thank you. God, thank you for 175 years of Blackwater United Methodist Church and for all of the great works and the great ministries and, the, the, and the, just the legacy of this amazing church of just from a simple gift of land to, the, to those that came in on horses to bring forth the good news and to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with all that, that would listen, that would hear. God, we stand here today, God, saying thank you for the opportunity to be a part of this great church, to be a part of this great ministry that it continues to, to, to stretch beyond themselves into new ways, new opportunities, and inviting new people, oh God, to experience the loving, saving grace of Jesus Christ. And so, God, we give you thanks and praise for all of those that have been here, that have crossed through these doors, that have been able to serve in ministry and in leadership here, oh God. We give you thanks. God, we come now, Lord, just saying thank you, God, for all that you are, all that you've been, and all that you will continue to be for even another 175 years, oh God. And so, God, we ask right now for, for, your, for your forgiveness. If there's been anything that we have said or thought or done that has not been pleasing in your sight, forgive us right now in the name of Jesus. Create in us a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us all, O oh God. God, we pray for all of our young people as they led us this morning in worship, oh God, that we would continue to lead them into, may, into ways and so that they can grow up in the faith to be mighty men and women of God, O oh God. And so, God, we come right now, God, praying for all of those that are worshiping here today. God, for you know there are many things deep on our hearts, God, things that need your healing touch, people that need your healing power. God, we ask for your healing to rest, rule, and abide amongst all of us, amongst all of our families, amongst those that we love and care about, oh God. God, we pray for those that are worshiping with us on online and whatever um, concerns that they have within their hearts, oh God, we ask that you would cover them right now in the name of Jesus. God, for all of those that are serving in our armed services, we ask that you keep them safe, protect and guide them as they protect us and, and, and protect the freedoms of this country, oh God, that you would be with them and that you would lead them and guide them in, in whatever ways that they need to be led, oh God. And so, God, we ask that you would just have your way, that you would take over right now in the name of Jesus, that you would move us out of the way, O oh God, and allow you to reign forth, O oh God, that your river of living water will flow through all of us, and that something in this service today, O oh God, touches us to leave us transformed, O oh God, so that when we leave this place, we leave different, that when we walk out of these doors and go into the grocery store, or go back to work, or go back to school, that they say something is different about you, oh God. And God, we know that it is only but because of your power, because of your grace, because of your mercy, oh God. And so for all of these things that we ask and receive as we pray in the way in which Jesus the Christ taught us, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Let the church say amen. amen. That was powerful. Let the church raise a hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is good. And all the time. Amen. Amen. Greetings to the members and to Pastor Kenan Hickett. I have finally, finally found you at church. Each time, each time I have come to visit Blackwater United Methodist Church, Pastor Pickett has been elsewhere. <laughs> but it's such an honor and a pleasure to be asked to come and celebrate with you on your 175th church anniversary. That is powerful. What a powerful witness to be here in this location. And, and thank you to the Hopper family. What a, le Hooper. I, why did I say Hopper? <laughs> Hooper family. Thank you. You got two whole rows back here, right? <laughs> yeah, right here. So thank you so much and for the vision and the legacy uh, that has taken place through that donation to the Louisiana Conference of the United Methodist Church. And before we get started, I, I just want to let you all know how much the Louisiana Conference appreciates Blackwater United Methodist Church. We see you, I see you, and you are doing a mighty ministry here at Blackwater. Amen? Also, I, I would like to say that I want to encourage you in this time, in these few minutes that I have with you, I want to encourage you in your faith to keep on keeping on as witnesses of Jesus Christ as we continue to move forward with hope together in the Louisiana Conference of the United Methodist Church to tell the gospel story, because that's the most important story, the gospel story, story as we continue to build, connect, and equip to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the future. There is work to do. Can I get an amen? And I know you and, 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 and I know you are a congregation also of faith. So I want to begin with these familiar words that many of you have heard before, found in Hebrews chapter 11, verses 1 through 3 and verse 6. And I'm reading from the New King James Version. And you, you'll know these words well. And it says this. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good testimony. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. But without faith, verse 6, but without faith it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God or she who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Let us pray. Almighty God, we give you thanks for this day, this morning. We thank you, O oh God, that you have brought us here to worship together in a location that has been worshiping you for over 175 years in this location. Lord, we ask that you open up our minds and you open up our hearts, oh God, so that we can receive your word. And Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditation that is upon my heart be acceptable to you. For you, oh God, are our rock and our redeemer in all times and in all places. Let us all say amen. amen. Now, I, I, you may or may not know uh, that I grew up in Topeka, Kansas. Anybody ever been to Topeka, Kansas? Okay. Anybody ever been to Kansas? <laughs> okay. All right. All right. All right. And uh, uh, as a child of the 1970s, I, I grew up as a child in the 1970s. Any 1970s kids in here? Come raise them high. There should be a bunch of us in here. Right, right, right. And every Sunday, every Sunday, my family attended Asbury Mount Olive United Methodist Church. And I remember going to church on Sunday, and the church was filled with hardworking people. There were teachers, there were nurses, there were doctors, there were CNAs, there were RNs and LPNs, there were attorneys. We had lawyers in our congregation. We had 
factory workers and, and business owners. We had postal workers and architects. We even had a psychiatrist in our, in our congregation. There were retired people, and there were small and large families. There were widows and widowers. And I remember vividly, vividly, everyone came to church dressed up in their Sunday best. Remember those days? Ladies in their hats and gloves and matching purses and shoes. Anybody remember those days in here? Mm -hmm. And the men in suits and ties, and they would come in smelling like Old Spice <laughs> or Brute, one of the two. And us children were dressed in our Sunday-only clothes and shoes. Anybody remember those Sunday-only clothes and shoes? Uh-huh. The girls in our, our dresses and our patent leather shoes with those, those socks with the lace around the ankles that just made you itch. Remember that? And I remember I used to get my hair pressed all the way down to get ready the night before to get ready for church. And then the boys would come in in little suits and ties and hats to mimic the men, right? And I remember this all like yesterday, and it was a, it was a time, it was, it was a time that I just really hold dear to my heart. And I also remember when it was time for church to start. The liturgists would call the church to order, basically, and, and go to the, to the lectern, and, and they would say, the Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth be silent before him. Then the doors at the back of the sanctuary would open wide and the acolytes would walk in with the light of Christ and the choir would come in and they would be swaying to the left and to the right and they would be singing my favorite hymn. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. God has not failed us yet. Oh, you can't turn around. We've come this far by faith. And then the vocalist would sing a verse and they would say, just the other day I heard a man say he did not believe God's word, but I can truly say the Lord has made a way. God has not failed us yet. That's why we've come this far by faith. I remember watching the people as a little girl when, when that choir came in and, and they would be swaying, people in the congregation would be swaying and, and nodding their head to the rhythm of the music in agreement that yes, we have come this far by faith. And as young as I was, and, and, and though at the time I did not exactly know what they were singing about, but when the people sang that song, y'all, something changed. Something happened in the atmosphere of the church. Because whatever they were singing about, I knew in my child's mind it was true. And as I watched the people, it seemed that the frustrations and the disappointments and the challenges of their week just melted away. And for a moment, the people could live in the security of their faith and their hope. And remember that, yes, God was with them. God was with them. You see, that song, I believe, made us feel something you just cannot explain and see. And for me, that song remains as powerful today as it did back then. Singing that song brought in the presence, ushered in the presence of God. And we knew that all things, all things and everything was going to be all right and anything was possible through God in spite of the things that were happening in the world. And they knew without a doubt that without faith, it was and is impossible to please God. And years later, as I grew up and, and I walked around, I stumbled around, I crawled through the journey of life, I realized that finally what those old folks were really doing, they were singing that same old tired song to me as a kid. It was like, oh, why we gotta sing that song again and again, week after week? They were singing their faith into me, giving me a legacy of their unwavering faith and hope in God. And that one day, true community and true humanity will come through Jesus Christ. You know, today I selected this Hebrews 11 to encourage you here at Blackwater United Methodist Church 
Just as the unknown writer of Hebrews 11 wanted to encourage the Christian believers long ago. The writer of Hebrews wrote this book to inspire the believers to hold on to their hope and faith in the Lord, even when things in their community were changing constantly around them. The words of this text help the community, you see, understand what faith is and to keep their trust and their confidence in God and not in human beings. So the writer helped them remember the people who had gone before them in what we call the roll call of faith. Remember, Abraham, who said yes to God and traveled through unknown lands that the Lord had led him to and would give him to his offspring. The baroness of Sarah, she gave birth to a son, Isaac, at 99 years old. 99? 99, right? Isaac would then in turn bless his sons, Esau and Jacob, and Jacob, who was Israel, and Joseph, who was the son of Israel, would prophesy the exodus of the Hebrew people out of the slavery from Pharaoh's lands. And the writer of Hebrews then wanted the people to remember Moses' mother. Her name was Jochebed, which means God's glory. For she hid her infant child three months. She hid Moses for three months then placed him in a basket and, and put him down the bayou. I learned what a bayou was a couple days ago, right? A slow moving river, right? right? Only for him to be found, y'all, by Pharaoh's daughter, who unknowingly called Moses' mom to come and nurse him. Look at God. Look what God can do. And later, Moses would deliver God's people, the, the Hebrews, the Israelites, out of Pharaoh's land through the Red Sea on dry land. That's a, that's, a, that's a Bible study right there on dry land, right? Yet none of, none of those people in this roll call of faith could see God's plan or the journey ahead. And yes, they would encounter challenges on the journey. And yes, there would be some who would want to go back to Egypt. Pastor, do you know anybody that wants to go back to Egypt in your church? Bless them. Bless them. <laughs> But some want to go back to Egypt, but he had to make hard decisions and keep moving forward in faith. For as the scripture tells us in 2 Corinthians, we walk by faith, not by sight. That is, we walk and live by faith, not by what we see. For it only takes a little bit of faith to believe that God has a plan, that God has a vision for us beyond the horizon of what we can see currently. Even today, 175 years later, there is more to come beyond the horizon. And thinking about your anniversary, I, I must tell you, I must tell you a story, another story about a teacher who sat down one day with their student and began to tell this, the student all about their travels. So they sat down outside, just picture it. And from where they were sitting, they could see way across a vacant field. And they, they watched the sun go down. And as the sun went down, the student noticed the line, right? The line, the line where the sky meets the earth, called the horizon. The horizon looked like the end of all things, the edge of the world where beyond there was absolutely nothing. Like many once believed that the world was flat. And you know what? Some people still think the world is flat, amen? And to travel beyond the horizon was to fall off the edge of the earth. But the teacher taught the student that, that, taught the student that a horizon was a line a limit or an extent of a person's experiences or their outlook or their interest or their knowledge. To travel, the teacher said, is to broaden one's horizons, to broaden one's lines, to broaden one's limits. So because the teacher had traveled, he told the student all about his travel, about the things beyond the horizon, the things beyond the line or the limits of what is seen. The teacher described huge islands and strange lands and peoples and told of cultures that were still native and natural. The teacher described the mighty Nile River and, and the pyramids in Egypt and the great ruins of Rome and about the Nubian people. 
The teachers shared about the seven natural wonders of the world, the Amazon, Table Mountain in South Africa, and the underground river in the Philippines, to name a few. The teacher told of many unbelievable things, and yet the student believed the teacher on the very simple fact that the teacher had been there. The teacher had seen for themselves and experienced it and walked through it. Therefore, the teacher knew what they were talking about. For us, Jesus knew what he was talking about. And we must trust that God has a plan because we have a cosmic traveler, the teacher, Jesus Christ, who came from beyond the horizon and returned back beyond the horizon and will come one day again. And when Jesus does return, what will he find as the fruit of his legacy? That's the question. What will Jesus find as the fruit of his leg legacy? What will he find? Will he find faith in the land? Will he find faith at Blackwater United Methodist Church in this place, in us? That's something for us to ponder. Your anniversary scripture, Pastor, that you sent me uh, comes from Ephesians uh, chapter 3. And, and chapter 3, verse 16 through 21, and it's a prayer from the apostle Paul. And starting in verse 14 and through 19, the apostle Paul says this prayer. He says, for this reason I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and earth takes its name. I pray that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray, Paul says, that you may have the power to comprehend or understand with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, and the height, and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses all knowledge so that you may be filled with the fullness of God. Blackwater United Methodist Church, it is faith in Jesus Christ that will move your legacy forward another 175 years, I pray. God is calling you in the community, am I in Central or Baker? Okay, Central and Baker, I, I was confused, right? <laughs> and beyond Blackwater United Methodist Church to keep your hand on the gospel plow and hold on. You've heard of the gospel plow, right? You're going to go plowing through the land with the gospel to make disciples of Jesus Christ and to keep teaching the young generations about grace and mercy and God's love found in his son, Jesus. Even in the midst of changing times of political chaos and gun violence and mental illnesses, I mean, it's, it's not on the rise, it's just way up there, amen? Addictions and war around the world and social unrest in our nation. We, or, or you, are still called to be the church of Jesus Christ, amen? We are to stay focused on faith in Jesus Christ and what God can do, so you must keep on moving forward with hope and faith so that those who come after you in another 175 years and sit in your favorite pew. Now, I know some of y'all got a favorite pew, that spot that you're sitting in. Well, one day you ain't going to be sitting in that spot anymore. You're going to have to give it up for somebody else, amen, or, or save it. Am, am, I, am I telling the truth? Am I telling the truth? <laughs> so that they can stand, so, so, that, so that they can stand on your shoulders or sit in your spot and continue to cultivate the ministries that you have planted here centuries before them. That's why we're here, because a family, I'm not gonna say it right, Hooper family, <laughs> Hooper family, had a vision to plant a ministry, and it's still here, 175 years later. That's powerful. That's a legacy, y'all. That's a legacy. 
And that legacy was planted and founded first in Jesus Christ, the author and the perfecter of our faith. And you know, it only took one person, one person, and it only takes one person, that's you and us, to tell the story that Jesus came to heal the sick. He came to raise the dead and set the captive free and give sight to the blind. This is where you should say amen, right? And to proclaim the good news of love and hope and mercy for all people, not just some people or one person, but all people, amen? So we've got to keep hope and we have to walk by faith in this time forward. And if each one of us here brought just one person, pastor, a friend, a relative, an acquaintance, or a neighbor to church with us to hear of this good thing that has been happening for 175 years and brought them to a place where Bible study or church school has been happening for 175 years, the legacy of this place that was started in 1848 to make disciples, this place would be full. It just takes one to bring one, amen? To keep on telling the gospel story where our legacy is founded in Jesus Christ, the chief cornerstone of our faith, the chief cornerstone of our faith. Then our, our true legacy then is fulfilled when we lift up Jesus Christ. Jesus said it to his disciples in John chapter 12, 32. He says, and I, when I am lifted up, I will draw all people unto me. Y'all know that song, right? Right? Matter of fact, the song Lift Him Up was written by a Methodist minister. Can you believe that? <laughs> Johnson Oatman wrote that song a long time ago. And in the words that, you know, I got to give you the words, right? I'm gonna give you the words, excuse my grammar there, right? <laughs> but he, he starts it off like this, and if we could just remember this each day and each week, I mean, we would be, not only would you be cooking, you're gonna be cooking with the spice that I can't take, because y'all's food is spicy, right? But you would be cooking, and he says in this song, he says, how to reach the masses, those of every birth. For an answer, Jesus gave the key. And I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people unto me, amen? And then it goes on, oh, the world is hungry for the living bread. People are hungry, y'all, for the living bread. Aren't you hungry for the living bread? People are hungry. And he goes on to say, he goes on to say, lift the Savior up for them to see. What are we lifting up when we're out there, Pastor? I don't know, right? Right? We've got to be lifting up Jesus, the living red. It goes on to say, trust him and do not doubt the words that he said. I'll draw all people unto me. And then he says, don't exalt the preacher. <laughs> well, <laughs> don't exalt the preacher, right? And don't exalt the pew or these things or anything like that. Preach the gospel, simple, true, and free. You hear what he said? Preach the gospel. It's the gospel that brings us here. Prove him and you will find the promise is true. I'll draw all people unto me. Do y'all sing this song in your church? Oh, we got to sing this song, y'all. And then it goes on to say, uh, it goes on to say, lift him up by living as a Christian ought. I like that. What does it mean? Sunday school, Bible study, all those things as a Christian ought. And he says, let the world in you the Savior see. Then the souls or people will gladly follow him who once taught, I'll draw all people unto me. You have an opportunity here at Blackwater to draw all people unto you for another 175 years. 175 years. And we are called to do what we can, the best way that we can. That is, we are by faith, or we by faith are called to lift up Jesus Christ in all that we say and we do. And as Colossians chapter 3 says, this is whatever you do, do it as you're doing it unto the Lord. Whatever we do out there, it's got to be unto the Lord or, or for the Lord. Blackwater United Methodist Church, 
You are to become a place where every soul that walks through the doors of your church can find a space and rest to worship and to come and know this wonderful Savior for themselves. That is the legacy that Jesus leaves behind. This is the legacy you now live and why the church was started 175 years ago. The legacy is Jesus. Your mission right now is critical, and you are doing it by providing free school uniforms for Central, and you're helping with the parents' day out. We saw the video. You're serving over 100 children in the school year throughout the year. You come together in ministries called Common Threads, making blankets and prayer shawls and, 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 and things that will bring meaning to people in great need. And you care about the wellness of people by by having community health fairs. And you are looking to the future with a vision with the Blackwater Center for Community Enrichment. And you are starting new school programs and mentoring folks and helping families be a part of the ministry. And you're collaborating with homeschool cooperatives and expanding your children and your youth ministry. You know, these childhood ministries of church are important as you saw how I started out. I'm here because of those folks. They prayed and they kept going on and on. Blackwater, you will have some challenges. I'm just gonna tell you, you're gonna have some challenges ahead as you continue to grow in the numbers of people in ministry. New voices and new thoughts and ideas will come to the table to share new ideas. And some will want the church to return to Egypt, Pastor. <laughs> or stick, in, stick with the familiar, or hang out in the desert. But what you will have to remember when that happens, you'll have to remember this question. What legacy do you want to leave behind for the next 175 years? How will you share that story? You know, each person here is a key to the legacy of faith and hope in the ministries of this church. Each one of you is a key to moving the vision forward here at Blackwater. But remember, it is only by the power of the Holy Spirit that you or we can do anything at all. We can't do it by ourselves. If we don't have the power of the Holy Spirit that started the church, then we're just an or another organization. We have to rely on the power of the Holy Spirit to transform us from inside. We have to be transformed in order to help someone else find transformation in the gospel of Jesus Christ. We cannot put ourselves up on this pedestal but we have to humble ourselves knowing that it is Christ that we are leading people to. It is the cross that we are leading people to because Jesus died. We didn't die for, for everybody. Jesus died for all who will come to believe. So it's about the message of Jesus Christ. I can't say that 175 times right now, but that's why we are here. We are called to share the good news. We are called to walk with the shoes of the gospel of peace, not war, the gospel of peace, so that others, others can come and know this awesome Savior. We've got work to do, and we've got to hold on to this faith. And you have to remember the legacy in Jesus Christ. Now, now, Paul, he ends his prayer like this. He says, and this is in verse 20 and 21 of that scripture, he says, he says, now to him whom the power at work within, within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations all generations forever and ever. Amen. We've got work to do, y'all. But guess what? You can do it. We can do it.
with the power of the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask on this day that you continue to strengthen our inner being. Strengthen us, O oh God, on this journey. Lord, we know we cannot live 175 years into the future, but Lord, we can take this day by day. So help us, O oh God, to be the people you have called us to be, rooted and grounded in your love that is found in Jesus Christ, who gave his life as a ransom for many, who gave his life for each one of us here. Lord, I ask that you continue to encourage the congregation to let them know, oh God, how deep your love really is. And Lord, help us to remember that there not only were generations behind us whose shoulders we stand on, there are generations who are coming before us, oh God. Help us, oh God, to show them how to be a witness for the future. Help us, oh God, to help our children remember those songs of faith. For they draw us back in our later years to come and serve you. And then, Lord, I ask that you continue to bless this church. Bless the pastor. Bless everyone sitting in every pew in here, oh God. Bless the children, oh God, as they walk up and down the halls, as they come into the buildings. Bless, oh God, the common threads that, that are, are developed and, and, and put together here and deployed on their mission. Oh God, bless the children, oh God, who have mentors and, and parents who, who get a night out. Bless the work of your workers, your servants, their hands. And remind us, oh God, in all that we do, that we have on the shoes of the gospel of peace. And that we can only move by your Holy Spirit. It's in Jesus' name, oh God, we give you all the praise and the glory and the honor, knowing, oh God, that you will be with us and that you will not leave us as we move forward in this legacy. In Jesus' name I pray. Let us all say, Amen. Amen. What a powerful message. <laughs> you have heard God's word. You have worshiped the Lord with your heart and music today. You've seen the testimonies of our children and grandchildren, parents, grandparents, great-grandparents. You have seen what God has done. And now it is your turn to respond. It's your turn. Maybe for you, part of what Christ did to call you near to himself this morning was to bring you here in this space. Maybe peace and maybe God is calling you to the baptismal bowl to remember the work that Christ accomplished in you in your baptism. Maybe you've heard and seen something that was compelling and, it, and maybe you've decided, hey, this is, this is the place where I want to do ministry. This is your time to respond to what God has done. Maybe you just need to get on your knees and, and pray. Maybe God laid something on your heart this morning. Or maybe you just want to thank God for all that is and will be. This is the invitation to discipleship. It is your opportunity to allow God to transform you from the inside. I invite you to stand as we sing our invitation to discipleship. This is your moment. Pastor Mark, I'm gonna invite you forward if you could come and you can pray uh, with us uh, at this time. Uh, remember your baptism, whatever God has led you to. I pray.
so here's how we're going to dismiss. I'm going to say a quick blessing. Would you pray with me? God, thank you for this opportunity that we've had to be together. Thank you for all you've done and all that has been spoken and sung here. Thank you, God, that we now get to go out and be your church in the world and proclaim a message of hope. God, be with us in our fellowship. Bless the food to the nourishment of our body and our bodies to your service. Thank you for the hands that brought it to our table today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And so now, people of God, I just say thank you. Thank you for who you are and who God is in each and every one of you. Because with you all, you would get a real sense for experiencing the fullness of Jesus Christ, not only through people, but across time. And so I just want you to know how grateful that we are for the church that Christ has called together. And may God be celebrated in all that you do. Go and share the message of hope. Go and share the message of salvation available to us through Christ Jesus. And let's be joyful because what else should we be? Amen? Amen. Go with the hope and light of Christ in you and may the peace of Christ go in you. Amen.